This is practice number five. Practice six this afternoon in the Armour All Top 10 shootout. BP Ultimate Pit Lane opens up for a critical one hour of uh, practice time now where people will be refining their race cars, overcoming little problems here and there. So, for example, Todd Hazelwood's car number 14, shared by Dean Fiore. They were talking about just a few moments ago a mapping issue with the. There it is, the Cup Cadet entry. Uh, we're on board Car 888 now. If you're only just joining the coverage this weekend, you may have not caught up with the news that. Down, look at this. There's a duo if oh. ever you've seen them. <laughs> Vinny and Chaz. <laughs> oh dear. I hope it was cheap. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, Vinny's been part of the series for a long period of time. He works hard managing the transporter down there at Walkinshaw Andretti United. Looks after the tyres there as well. Chaz looks after the speed. He's done a fine job of that. He was only 7100 slower yesterday in Armour All Qualifying. We're focused on Jack Perkins here. I laugh with Jack last night and said, well, you've got a little bit more pressure on your shoulders and he just shrugged it off and said, nah, we just do our job. And young Zach Best, who's a rookie this weekend, driving with Jack LeBrock, who did a superb job to get into the top 10 yesterday afternoon, will be another combination that will be strong. How's that? Straight away, Holdsworth gaps the field by 0.6 of a second. Both nine, both nine coming up through the, it's, it's the whole car shaking. So it's something that is not, as I said, it's not mechanical. You can't feel it through the steering wheel or the floor, but you can feel it through the whole car. Wow. Yeah, so I, I, it might be I, wheel balance. Wonder whether it's the same set of wheels. Oh, he's got no steering control because the left front's completely at odds with the proper direction of where that car ought no, to be no, going. <laughs> Here's what happened. Uh, so he's glided up to the wall, and as he's caught it, it's actually steered around its own front wheels at Sulman Park, just on the run to the top of the mountain. Here's the other view. So here's a replay from above on Conrod Strait, and that front left uh, is in a real state there, and then um, it's just fired across to the right-hand side of the road and hit the wall. It must, it must have dug in. I mean, it's so strange. I mean, Right front. Oh, well, gee, it was nasty as it kicked over that little ditch. Actually, it wasn't as far to the right as I thought he was when we picked him up crawling back on. Here it is. Oh, gee, it locked late. And it locked the wrong side of the car. <laughs> oh, that's nasty. So they'll have to have a good look at the underbody on that car now as a result. So check the locking out on the right front. It's usually the other one, to Mark's point. Are you still trying to get it across? It come from not actually being able to get it back to the right-hand side of the road early enough. So it's clearly very deep under brakes. And have a look at that reaction there. The back of the car's three foot in the air. So that will have ingested a pile of gravel into that air intake at the front and also in the brake ducting in front of the car. This is what it feels like from on board. Strange walk up, wasn't it? Yeah. It, it, it was it had little bits of steering to start with, didn't it? It was really weird. Yeah, so they'll have a good look and because that will have also given those mountings on that effectively the front wing, which is the front bumper assembly lower half, it will have given it a fair knock and the angle of that and the way in which it's mounted is all critical to the car's performance. Lee Holdsworth's got the reference number that they're all continuing to chase at the moment on a 5.7, but it's not so much about peak speed as comfort, although the reason why we picked up Thomas Randall is this might be about peak speed because his first set to speak has actually gone faster than anybody out there. Lee's the guy that's been quicker over the top of the hill and down the bottom of the hill in car number 25. Uh, yesterday, they, they just didn't quite hit the numbers with this car. They were talking about brake issues and just general instability for much of practice and then it actually understood they needed to turn better in qualifying so James was not happy with it. He's headed previous co-driver sessions out of the final corner of Murray's Copy to the that, control line that. Yep. and that is an improvement of a tenth of a second so two minutes 5.6 for Lee Holdsworth and oh nasty moment for David it's Russell. He's flown into the gravel at the bottom of the chase down there at incredibly high speed and he's searching for the grass verge. Alright, so see you're out. Just bring it around, we'll clean it out. Bring it around, we'll clean it out. Something, there's something broken. George Commons is the engineer. He was very animated when he went off. So it was something. What's going on in the front? Yeah, that's okay. yes, but I think it was a mechanical failure. That's what he was All trying right, to explain. Okay, this is hot. This one here we go. a bit more. No, no great evidence of lockup, but something unstable or weird 
there but it, again it might have broken a bottom pin and a wishbone on the front upright it got quite unstable through the right hander and you can see it buffeting around so for sure something is from a front suspension geometry perspective something's affecting the linearity the tram line effect of what that car's done in the braking area big slide there for Luffy and what to do for him it goes up five spots up to third nice job with a 609 gets the seal of approval there by Bryce forward a very good job so six flat that puts the Walkinshaw cars one and three in this co-driver field so that gives us an early indication of how strong they'll be in the race Craig Lowndes on board with him into the chase do you see vibration then I didn't see any that time I, I could see a little bit of it before but I didn't see any vibration that time so maybe they have cured that thing there'll also be a or will have been a requirement because we're now at the end of the session to just if it's not mechanical and it's not going to stop the car get on with the rest of the program and we'll look at that when we get it back in the garage later so they've obviously got some little quirk in a body fit somewhere there's some air getting in and pressurizing now, where did craig end up? so craig ended up being ninth as you can see on our session results there practice number five Repco Bathurst 1000, that one for the co-drivers. The next one is a mixed session and we're going to see more fireworks. Some people will rehearse their top 10 shootout. Holdsworth, Golding, Luff, Randall, Wood, Webb, Blanchard, Best, another good job, then Lowndes and Dalberto. Followed by Tanda, Russell, Moffat, Fiore, Caruso, Yulden, O'Keefe, Davison, Ojeda, Wall, Perkins, Ingle, Kostecki. Unfortunately for Matt Campbell, trouble relatively early in the session. And then Chris Pither in 25th position on a flat eight. So that was a and it sets up what's going to happen now for tomorrow's race.